Hello and welcome to Midweek Connect. My name's Dave Walker. Good to have you joining us today. Today my subject is um, the fact that God is your salvation, your security and your song. And we see that in Psalm 27. Whatever you're facing today, whatever new challenges have hit you, whatever things are going around your your head, making you think, how can I face this day? How can I face the rest of this week? I want to use Psalm 27. There are many Psalms like this, but Psalm 27, and teach you how to use the Psalms, the Word of God, to allow God to speak through them and and for His Spirit to water, water it, to give you renewed vigor and enthusiasm for the day. God is with you. Let's look at Psalm 27. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, a version that I use quite often. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. I mean, that is just loaded with so much promise in that one verse. That's incredible. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will guide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under a cover of his tent. He will lift me high up on a rock. And and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a path, a level path, because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing bit by bit. That will probably take too much of a long time. But just um, a few points in here to encourage you. And I know that as I was reading that through and you were listening and possibly reading in your Bible as well, that you felt encouraged and lifted by so many things in there. He starts here at the beginning of this psalm. David starts by literally lifting up God, worshipping him. He's saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So whatever problems he's got, he's going there straight away with worship to God, an attitude of worship. And then he talks about what God has done. When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. So rather than saying this has happened, that's happened, God help, he's lifting God up and he's saying, you have done this in the past. I know you do this. You do great things. And he starts talking about what God is able to do. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. Listen, there's things that are going through you, around your head today. As a follower of Jesus, as somebody who may be a very strong Christian, stronger than me even, or maybe you might consider yourself to be a, a rather weak Christian. But whatever's going through your head, does this word right now encourage you? Apply it freshly to your situation and you can be confident. But then before he starts talking about the horrible things that have gone on in his life and God help me with this. 
He says, one thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord's Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon his beauty. So he's just saying, God is great. He's done this in the past. Lord, I want to seek your face and gaze upon your beauty. That is the most important thing. No matter what else happens, that is the most important thing in his life. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to just jump straight in with his request. And he goes further down and said, look, hear, O Lord, when I cry out. Now he's coming into the bit, that, uh, the, you know, the, the real tough bit where he wants God to help him. Be gracious to me and answer me. Hear, O Lord, when I cry out. Be gracious to me and answer me. But he's also further down saying, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. He's saying, yeah, even though bad things may have happened, in my life, it's just possible that I might have put a foot wrong. So Lord, teach me your way. None of us are too, um, too perfect and too great uh, and, and too, I don't know, sanctified in the Christian faith to admit our weaknesses. All of us make mistakes. In Milton Keynes at the moment, um, a city in the middle of England, they're trialing um, automatic cars. Now actually what happens is you get in the car and somebody drives it remotely. So they've got certain elements that are driven by a computer, but all the person has to do is summon the car, the car comes along. And they're using Milton Keynes because it's based on a very uh, sort of, I mean, neatly laid out grid system. It's sort of easier for computer cars. And you get in there, but it's actually somebody driving it from afar. There's somebody in office somewhere and they've got cameras everywhere, and they're driving the car for you remotely. What an incredible concept. But do you know, if we trust God, and if we do what he asks us to do, and we comply with him, he will drive our car for us remotely. We cooperate with him, but he will look after us remotely. And I want to say that if you're not a Christian and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, I've discovered since the age of 19 that Jesus Christ is real. And if you want to ask him to be your Lord and Saviour um, and, and welcome him into your life and live the life that he has got for you, you'll not only get forgiveness, but you will get the promises that are here in this particular psalm. And I want to finish with two verses now as we move on. I believe, this is, this is your song today and my, and, my, and my song, this is our belief. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And this is the instruction for all of us right now. Verse 14, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Keep that right in the centre. Don't start each day without uh, thinking, oh, goodness gracious me, I've got this to... Think about that to think about, you know, I'm going to have a breakdown, I'm going to resign, I'm going to do this or whatever. Just get in there and follow the principles that David laid out in this psalm. Just lift God up, talk about what he's done. Ask him to guide you and to keep you on a level path. And then talk with him, allow his spirit to speak to you and just respond to what he says to you because he will do and he loves you and he will not let you down. Have a good day, have a good week and thank you very much for listening to Midweek Connect from Elim Church Romsey today. God bless you.